Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Good. Today's a standalone message. I think I only do like maybe three or four of those a year, if that. And today's a standalone message. I wish I could do a whole series, but I'm not because this word today is going to be sufficient to get us stirred up with God's word. Um, I want to start with this. When you look at uh, the whole resurrection of Jesus Christ, it was pretty awesome because Jesus kept reminding the disciples with his word. Everybody say word. Yeah. And, and we know that if you want to look at the word, just read Genesis chapter 1 in the beginning, and then you start seeing that God the Father was there, God the Son was there, and God the Holy Spirit was there. So the word was from the beginning, from the very beginning. And Jesus is constantly telling his disciples, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die for your sins. But don't, you, don't, don't, don't get all, you know, bent out of shape. I'm going to rise again. And so now it's the third day. It's day number three. They go and they look in the tomb. The tomb stone is removed. Everybody's freaking out. The whole town is like, where in the heck is Jesus? Everyone's freaking out. The disciples are freaking out. Nobody knows where the body of Jesus is. Nobody knows what took place, what happened. It's almost like they forgot what Jesus said to them. Like so many of us, we forget what God already said in the word. And so Jesus The first thing he did is he wanted to go ahead and start his rounds of making himself present to his disciples. Isn't that cool that he didn't want to go show himself to the rulers. He didn't want to go show himself to all the haters and say, now what? What? No, he wanted to go make himself present to his disciples, to his followers. God wants to make himself present to you today. And look at what happens here. Check this out. In Luke chapter 24, verse 15 through 18 says this. It says, while they were talking, Jesus approached them and began walking with them. And although they saw him, they didn't, what? Recognize him. And he asked them, what are you discussing? Isn't that cool that God cares about what you're talking about? Like when you think about that, Jesus is listening to our conversation. Like if Jesus was sitting in the car, would you flip off that driver? Like if Jesus was sitting in that car, you know what? Would you be having that conversation that is bringing death and not life? Would would you would you talk about the things that you talk about continually, whether they're complaints, whether they're idle words? Would you talk like that if you knew that Jesus was walking with you? We probably wouldn't, right, if he was in the flesh. So he's listening to this discussion, and check this out. And so they stopped. So he said, what are you guys talking about? So they stopped, and they looked very what? Sad. So they just kind of, can you just just picture this? Stephen, walk with me. So uh, they're walking together, and then they stopped. And they're like, are you crazy? <laughs> and, and they look very sad. Like some of us this morning, thank you. You're probably looking very sad this morning. I don't know. Maybe you are going through something because life does happen. And one of them, Cleopas replied, he says, are you the only one in Jerusalem who doesn't know what has happened recently? Like they literally can't recognize that Jesus is walking with them and they stop dead in their track. They're sad and they're like, are you serious? Like you're the only one in all of Jerusalem that hasn't, you know, read the news, that hasn't looked on social media, that hasn't seen Facebook? Did you not hear that Jesus' body is missing? And as I begin to think about this verse, I can't help but think about how many of us walk with God every single day. We walk with the Word. We walk with Jesus. And oftentimes, We ourselves can't even recognize that Jesus is present right there in the moment of whatever it is that you're facing, but we fail to recognize because we're more consumed with the sadness than we are with the one who is the answer to the sadness, who is the answer to the joy, who is the answer to whatever it is that we need. And that happens to us so many times. It's happened to me. 
where all of a sudden something happens in ministry. Ministry, it's, it's heavy. Church stuff is heavy, man. Like things can be awesome like in one day, the next day, man, boom, avalanche of bad news. It's, it's like that. It's every week. But every week there's awesome things. And it's easy to not recognize that no matter what we face on the highs or lows, that Jesus is walking with you. And he's listening to your discussion. He's paying attention to what you're saying. And so there is a difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing him personally. I'm going to say that again. There is a big difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing him personally. And I think that when you don't develop that intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you will never recognize Jesus even if he was standing in front of you. You won't. And so I like that we have so many podcasts. I like that we have so many sermons at the tip of our fingers called a cell phone on YouTube. But there's also a difference about hearing someone tell you about God's word and then you knowing God's word personally. I'll tell you, this is the most laziest generation when it comes to God's word. And I'm saying that in the most loving way it's so true instead of diving into our word we'll go find a podcast that deals with our problem as if they're going to fix your problem yes or no like hey man like i always hear that hey man have you heard stephen furtick hey have you heard of tdj and i love all those guys those guys are like my heroes hey have you but i never hear them hey hey, did you hear what matthew 9 28 says hey did you hear what psalms 119 verse 105 says you don't hear that you only hear what others people said but you don't hear people say well this is what god said when was the last time where you said, hey, did you hear what, what Matthew 9, 29 said? Like, and it's like, oh, my God, like you just got a word in season. But we rather, why? We're, we're so conditioned. We're so conditioned in our culture to be so lazy, to just want someone to fix us and not realize that we have the source. We have a covenant. We have a God who gives us the ability to produce Wealth, not just finances. Don't get stuck on money. Wealth, wealth of knowledge, wealth of wisdom, wealth of revelation, wealth of healing. There is a wealth that God wants us to produce, but that only comes through the knowledge of knowing him and his word. (laughs) Come on. We've all been there. We've, 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 We've failed to recognize Jesus in certain situations. I want you to write this down. Your walk will put you in touch with God. Your walk will put you in touch with God. What do I mean by that? In other words, how do you walk with God? Because how you walk with God will put you in touch with God. Out of your walk will flow the issues of life. That's just the way it works. Everything flows and grows out of your walk with God. How do I know this? Well, look at Psalms 119, 130. It says this. It says the entrance of your words gives what? It gives light, doesn't it? The entrance of whose words? Podcast? Pastor Mauricio? No. Listen, I'm just just trying to help you connect with God's word and hopefully strike a hunger for you. But at the end of the day, guess what? Man, I can bring you to water, but you got to drink. You know what I'm saying? I can't drink for you. I can only lead you to it. And then you have to begin to do your part. And so he says, the entrance of your words gives light. The entrance of God's word brings light. The more I get into this, the more light comes into me. The less I get into this, the more darkness I get into me. So you, you read your word, and now you're entering light. What does light do? It exposes. What does light do? It shows you the path. It gives you direction. What does light do? It cancels out any darkness that you're facing in life. So he says it gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. You know what another version says, the, like the OG, OG, OG? It says, and it gives understanding to the childish. You want to stop being childish? Get in God's word. 
You want to stop wearing spiritual diapers? Get in God's word. It's the entrance of his word that brings light to whatever it is that we're facing. And I love it because God's word is the only way to get God's wisdom. It's the only way. There is no other way to get the wisdom of God. If you want wisdom in any area of your life, if you want wisdom in finances, open God's word. If you want wisdom in family, open God's word. If you want wisdom in making a decision, open God's word word it is the entrance to light it is the only way to discern whether or not you are living or doing what is right or what is wrong it's the only light that will tell you if it's this way or if it's that way think about it when you read your word it's not necessarily you reading the bible the bible starts reading you and the bible starts telling you you're right or you're wrong and how many know that the word of god okay god's word will reward you for good things, but God will also reward you for bad things. Nobody likes to hear that one. God rewards his kids, just like your kids. If you're a parent, when your kids are good, you want to give them the the world. You want to take them to Disneyland. When they act up, what do you want to do? You want to take away everything from them. No PlayStation, no Xbox, no TV, no phone for a year. No, why? We're rewarding them for their bad decisions, but God also rewards for good decisions. But how are you going to make good decisions unless we begin to open the word and not realize that it's his word that brings us into the entrance of God's revelation. It brings us into the entrance of God's wisdom for whatever it is you're facing. But we have to have a love for God's word. It can't just, you can't just be only hearing sermons, guys. It's not about that. It's about you knowing him personally. If not, you'll be like the disciples. They're walking with him and don't recognize that he's right there with them. I mean, literally right now during worship, you could have literally missed the fact that Jesus was present when we were worshiping. Right now, right here. While they were singing, Jesus was standing next to them. While you were lifting hands, Jesus was standing next to you. Some of us are like, well, you know what? I don't lift hands. That's not what I do. If Jesus was standing next to you, you'd be lifting your hands. Isn't that amazing how things just change? They change once you realize that the person is there. It's like when you first go for an interview, for a job, you sit there and you dress your best, you look your best, you talk your best, then you get comfortable and you lose your best. That's what happens with God. You start dressing up the part. You start looking the part. You want to you wanna please God. But then after a while, we just, we just get so comfortable. And, and it's kind of like, eh, let's go to church. We walk in here, you know, at, at 8, 10 in the middle of worship. And you've heard me say this a million times, and I'll keep saying it over and over. But at the movie theater, you won't miss the previews. But you'll waltz in here, come here. Oh, it's the kids, Pastor. It's the kids. It's the kids. Uh, uh, Did the kids drive you here? (laughs) I got all these kids. I got all these. You're training your children to be late. You're training your children to think of church as a second thought, not the first. See how the amens dropped? Did you see that? Just just. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, am I? No. Listen, when you get in the word, it's the only way to discern whether you're doing good or you're doing bad. There's no other way to get God's discernment unless you get it through God's wisdom. When you start operating off of God's discernment, you start making poor choices. You start making bad decisions. You start making bad deals business deals you start hooking up with the wrong people why because if the word was inside of you you would know who's the right people to invite in your life and who are the wrong people that need to stay out of your life but when you have no discernment you invite everything to your life i know that's good thank you so good (laughs) come on god's word will help you make good decisions good decisions do you want the blessing of god or do you want the blessing of you which one do you want well, you better get in that word because you can have the blessing of you 
But if you want the blessing of God, because I hear people say like, man, God never blesses me. But if you look at their track record, they never read the word. They just want somebody to fix it for them. God wants you to know him personally. And the only way to know him personally is by you knowing the scriptures, you knowing the word. I mean, that even goes for people that say, well, praise God, that's not for me. Praise God. I know all the word. I can quote 10 scriptures, 20 scriptures. I've memorized them. Okay, great. Now, which one are you living? Because you can memorize all you want, but the question is, it's not just about memorizing. It's which one is the theme of my life? What scripture is the theme of my walk? What verse is? says this is what i live for and i do encourage you to do that find a verse because the wisdom of god is the word of god say with me the wisdom of god is the word of god come on do you want the blessing of god or the blessing of you yeah come on okay well then you have to get wisdom you got to get wisdom so many things would start getting fixed in your personal life if you just start getting the wisdom of god seriously like bad attitudes would go away like this if you just got in god's word why? The word will check you. Right? The word will confront you. The word will convict you. The word of God will challenge you even to grow up. The word of God will tell you you're thinking too small. The word of God will tell you, hey, listen, I have more for you. The word of God won't lie to you. The word of God will tell you the truth. And he says, and then the truth will set, set you what? Free. So think about this. What are you not free from right now? You can trace it back to how much word you have in you or not. It's a covenant, right? It's a promise of God. You can't just come here and sit here and then just think that, oh, Pastor Bruce is going to bring us a great message today. Okay, that's awesome. I'm glad I entertained you. I'm glad you got, you felt good about yourself. But then what? Okay, this is just, this is just a strike a hunger. I just gave you like an appetizer. People always say, I want to go to church with the meat of the word. No. How about you get in relationship with God and eat at his table? Amen. He's the word. Think about it. You want meat? Hook up with Jesus. Right? That's the only way to get meat. You get in the presence of God and he will serve you a divine meal. And, and, and then wisdom will come for your finances. And wisdom will come for your career. And then wisdom will come for your family. And then wisdom will come for your children. I'm telling you. As a matter of fact, when you have the word inside of you, parents, let me tell you something. God will give you the discerning spirit of who they're hooking up with with their friends. Before you even begin to get to know their little friends, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will begin to reveal things to you and begin to tell you, hey, listen, this right here, this relationship is not going to be good for them. But what happens is we wait till all hell breaks loose, and then we wonder, why did that happen? Let me tell you something. When you have enough word inside of you, the Holy Spirit will give you discernment of what choices you need to make and which ones you need to say no to. He will. He'll tell you that. And so too many of us, we're just wondering, I wonder what God wants me to do. Man, I wonder what God's calling me to do. Get in the word. Your calling is in the Bible. Your purpose is in the Bible. Come on. Not everyone here is called to ministry. Okay, so, you know, let's stop that whole noise of like, man, maybe I'm called to ministry. No, find out what God wants. Find out what he wants for your life. And when you find out, go with it with all your heart, and God will back you up. Look at what Proverbs 9.10 says. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? wisdom the fear of who the lord the fear of god in other words the fear the reverence of god is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy one is understanding come on how many times are we in that place where i don't understand why all this is happening to me what is what does the fear of the lord mean it means to to have a, a healthy respect for god when you fear god When you have a healthy understanding of fearing God Almighty, let me tell you something. It's so much easier to stop doing some of the things that we do that put us in the position or the place that we're in right now. But when there's no healthy fear, we keep the same cycle. We keep the same pattern. We keep the same, uh, you know, mindsets and nothing changes. Why? Nothing will change until you start having a respect and a reverence for God's word. It's the beginning of wisdom. It's having, you should, be, you should be more afraid of making a decision without God. That's what you should be more afraid of. 
we should, we should have this healthy respect to say, I wonder what God thinks about this situation right now. Do you realize that God will also keep you from going to the wrong places? Places where you can get hurt? Places where you can get harmed? Like God can keep you literally safe from one jacked up relationship. Because one bad relationship can mess you up for a long time, huh? And we all believe that. We know that. And it doesn't have to just be with dating or marriage. I'm talking about just any relationship in general. It can mess you up for a, for a minute. And it kind of throws you off. And then before you know it, you're like, man, where is God in this whole situation? Well, if we get the fear of God back, God will give you the wisdom how to get out of that place. So it's the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One of who? The Holy One. When you open God's word, you are getting better acquainted with Jesus himself. When you don't open the word, you don't know Jesus. You only know the Jesus that people told you about, but you don't know the Jesus that wants to know you personally. I know this is a simple word, but simple is what we're losing as a church. The simplicity of God's word. Ask yourself, do I read my Bible? Just in your head. Don't answer it out loud, okay? Do I, do, I read by, do I read God's word? Or am I just playing church? You have to have a healthy respect for God's word. Think about it. When you look at this book here, now this is my Bible. Now, I get it. Technology is awesome, guys. I get it. But man, there's something about owning a book Bible. There's something about like turning pages. As a matter of fact, when you turn pages and when you use a, a, a paper and a pen to write notes, do you realize that your brain connects so much more than with technology? Like when you start reading it and turning a page, your brain muscles begin to operate and function a lot better. When you start writing, you memorize things a lot quicker than just watching something on a screen. As you open this book, this book becomes so powerful because as you begin to turn the pages, I mean, there's 800,000 words in this Bible that God wants to get to you. That means there's 800,000 words of wisdom in this Bible. There's 66 books in this Bible. And when you think about the Bible, there's 27 are New Testament and 39 are Old Testament. And they're all crammed with God's wisdom and God's genius. You want to get you want to get an inspired idea to start a business, get in God's word. Seriously, like you want to blow something up, it's amazing how so many people, man, they just want to do things like big, but you need a big God. Right? There's you, then there's a big God. I mean, it's crammed with so much wisdom, so much revelation. This book look at this john uh joshua 1 8 says this it says never stop reading this book of the law day and night you must think about what it says day and night you must now is the word must a suggestion or is it a command it's kind of like when you tell your kids clean your room what happens if they don't clean their room it keeps getting messier what if you don't clean your house what happens it just keeps getting more piled right what if you don't wash your dishes what happens it's going to smell. It's going to stink. What if you stop washing your car? What if you stop attending to the things that you have every single day? What do you think happens to those things? What if you stop changing the oil in your car? What if you stop giving the vehicle the maintenance it needs? What do you think happens? It gets fault. It breaks down. If you leave dishes piled up, it starts to stink. If you stop cleaning the house, well, it's going to be a mess. Well, what happens when you stop reading the word? You stink, you smell, you're broken down, huh? You're trying to get to a God destination, but you broke down in the desert, right? You're trying to, you're trying to get your healing, you're trying to get your breakthrough, but you're broken down. How are you going to move any further? You're not. It's the same way. That's why Joshua, when it says, he says, never stop. Never stop reading this book of the law. Day and night, you must think about what it says Make sure you do everything written in it then. Everybody say then. Then. then and only then, he says, things will go well with you. If things aren't going well with you, what do you think you need to start doing? You need to start thinking about what God says. Listen, I know this is practical, 
But today's church does not do that. Trust me, I'm always in counseling sessions. I'm always sitting with people. And it's the same thing. They expect people to fix them. People can't fix you, but God can. God can heal you. But he says, but you got to read. See, and here's what happens. He says, then things will go well with you, and you will have great success. Now, let me just bring you some more truth here so I can hurt your feelings a little bit. God doesn't give you success. Let me just say this again. God does not give you success. I'm a child of God, praise God. I'm going to be successful because I'm a Christian now. I'm a child of God. No, he says, if you read my book, you'll get success. If you don't read my book, no success. That's why he says, faith without works is what? So how are you going to grow your faith muscles if you're not doing the work? Huh? Do you know what the, when you go to the gym, any gym people here? Anybody go to the gym? One person, God bless you. <laughs> Chris, I love it, man. One guy. All right. So check this out. When you go to the gym and you're trying to, and you're trying to, you're trying to do what? You're trying to do what? Not just, don't just think healthy. What, what are you doing with your body? What are you trying to do? You're trying to build what? Muscles. Okay, so in order to build muscles, what must you do? Huh? You must lift weight. Weight is what produces muscle. Weight. Whether it's your body weight, whether it's weights at the gym, but weight is the only thing that can produce the muscle you need. What does that mean? Let's bring it out to a spiritual sense. Resistance is the only thing that can produce faith. So if you're not, if you're not applying faith, when life is resisting you, then you're not producing muscle faith. So instead of saying, oh, my God, everything's going down. Everybody here. God's like, I have you in the spiritual gym right now. Start lifting. Because faith without works. That's why he says, go back to Joshua 1. Please don't take it off. He said, read. Never stop reading this book of the law. Why? Because when you Never stop reading this book. He says, then things will go well with you, and you, will, and you will always have, the original says, and you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Are you getting this? I love this. God doesn't just give you success. He says, if you, if you read this book, I'll give you success. If you meditate on my word day and night, I'll give you success. If you pay attention to my word, I'll give you success. So, so many times we think that just because you go to church, just because you're a Christian, I should automatically be blessed by God. No. No, God's a father. And like any parent, a parent puts a responsibility on the child. And the same goes for you. And if you think that you're not going to experience any type of challenge or suffering or pain or whatever... You've already missed it. You have a spiritual gym every day that you can operate with because God has given you the capacity to grow muscle faith. He's given it to you. But if you don't know what God says about your situation, how are you going to overcome that? It's like going to the gym and you look at all those machines, right? Well, you can't just look at the machine and be like, okay, uh, bench press, give me arms. Ventress is just going to just sit there kind of doing what it does. It just sits there. <laughs> Bench press is going to be like, sit your butt down and, and start lifting me. Right? That's how we treat church. We come in here. Right? Not all of us, but maybe, maybe it's not even, maybe it's the church down the street. I know it's not you guys. I know it's not you guys. It's, it's the church down the street. It's that one. It's not us because we're different, right? We re- Yeah, praise God. Yeah. <laughs> and we're always working out. <laughs> it's funny because people say, uh, I wish God would bless me. We'll get in the book. Uh, I wish God would heal me. Well, then get in the book. 
I, I wish I wish God would would you know uh, bless my business the way He blesses His business. It will get in the book. I recently met with a friend. His uh, his his net worth in business per year is two hundred million. And and I was sitting with him because we're going to start a, a, a business ministry here soon, and he's going to come train our business people, and we're going to blow it up. It's going to be amazing. And I said, hey, so. So give me some things. I'm like, give me some stuff so I can just, uh, you know, start prepping. So he gives me, like, this whole pile of stuff. You know what it was? It was laminated sheets with Bible scriptures. <laughs> I'm like, Mike, you're awesome. <laughs> He's like, that's it. He's like, I, this is how I did it. This, this is how I make $200 million per year. This is how I did it. He's like, I got in the presence of God. I got the wisdom of God. I got the insight of God. And so many of us want the blessing, but we don't want to work for the blessing. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. See, you're just one knowledge away from your victory. Right now, this moment, whatever you're going through, you're one knowledge away. And if I, if I want to know God's plan for my life, you've got to go into the word of God. I discovered my call by reading the Bible. You think I just chose like, hey, let's see, uh, let's be a pastor. No, it's the last thing I wanted to do. I didn't want to be a pastor because I know what it comes with. But I also know it's rewarding. But I know it's hard. It's challenging. It's the most difficult job to do is leading people, but it's also a, ble a blessing. And so anything that you're going to need in this life is in this book are you listening to me okay but you have to study it you got to read it you got to chew on it you got to meditate on it and and here's the here's the key i encourage you and this is what i've done in my life and i think i can get better at it but this is what i did with my life i found a topic in the bible that i became an expert in find a topic in the bible that you want to become an expert in for example my topic was miracles and healing. Why? Man, because that's all I ever went through. All kinds of sickness, disease, and all, all hell would break. So you know what I started doing? I started reading every single Bible verse that dealt with healing and miracles. And that became the theme of my life. And because of that, we have seen so many incredible healings, deliverances, and miracles because I picked a theme for my life. You want to be an awesome business person? Get in God's word and find every single scripture that deals with business. Become an expert. You want to be an expert on forgiveness? Find every scripture on forgiveness. You want to be an expert on miracles? Find every scripture on miracles in the Bible and become an expert. Become an expert of something that God has already placed in there. And if you don't know what I'm called to do, I don't know what my purpose is, find a theme for your life in the Bible and run with it and watch what God will do. I double dog dare you. I dare you to find a theme for your life and do something with it instead of always moping and, and groaning about what didn't happen, what could have happened, what should have happened, but it didn't. You're not getting any younger. And neither am I. So we got to be an expert at something. When you get to heaven, I think God's going to be like, okay, son, what were you an expert at? Daughter, okay, what were, what were you going to say? Oh, I was an expert at being a stewardess. I was an expert at being a waitress. I was an expert at, at owning a technology, technology company. Like that was your expertise? No, God's going to be like, no, son, that was my blessing. I asked you, what were you an expert in? It's a quiet little Catholic church this morning. It's okay. Are you getting something out of this? Okay. Listen, if, because here's the deal. If you don't start becoming an expert of something in the Bible, you're going to hold yourself back. You're going to hold yourself back. You're going to be delayed constantly. You're always going to be questioning. You'll hold yourself back. Uh, it's going to be hard for you to rise again. It's going to be difficult to come to the top. But when you get in the word of God, you'll rise. You'll go to the top. God will make room for you. God will bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask, hope, think, or even dream of. That's Ephesians 3.20. How about just write that sucker down right there and just chew on that one? Like that's what God wants to do with our life. God wants 
us to be interested in his word. We must be interested. And if you're interested in God's word, you know what you're saying? I'm interested in success. When you don't read God's word, you're not interested in success. You're too interested in you. When you're in God's word, you're interested in him. And when you're in him and he's in you, then things start growing. Things start changing. Amen? Amen. Come on. What if you were an expert in forgiveness? Like what if you taught people how to forgive people? Wouldn't that be amazing? Like, what if you were an expert in business like Mike, who's going to be coming and helping me with this? What if you were an expert like Mike? Can you imagine being 200,000, 200, I'm sorry, 200 million net per year? What the? I'd have to stop begging, like, hey, can y'all help us with something? But it's sad that it, it has to take, like, one person that's, being super successful because they apply the word of God while the rest are just taking and not giving. Not cool. Are you hearing me? God, listen, God, and I'm saying this, God is going to raise up millionaires in this church. I'm telling you, God's going to do it. And if you don't like that, then you stay poor. (laughs) Just stay broke, barely make it. I want success. How about you? Well, listen, the only way to get that success is through God. God wants success more than you want it. He wants it more than you. Isn't that sad that God wants the dream for our life more than we want our own dream? And if it bothers you, then that's good because the, God's word's confronting you. In other words, that's like the itch right there. You start itching that right there. It's like God's like, okay, let's, let's address that issue. Okay, so you have to become an extra. Get a theme of God's word in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, get a theme. And so you know what you do? You, 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 you go get one of these, okay? I have a bazillion notebooks, okay? This is what I do. I have a notepad, pen, paper, my Bible. I have a cool little case that I carry this with me. And everywhere I go, I open that Bible and I start writing in here. Why? Stop using this right here. You're going to forget. You write it down. He says, write the vision. Make it play. So those who read it will run with it. We have to get back into God's word, get a note. Because if you're not serious, listen, that's why I get bothered when people don't take notes. Because I'm like, okay, then you're just listening and you're going to forget like 99.99% of what you heard. I'll just watch it later on YouTube. Okay. Uh, let's be honest. Is that really going to happen? It's not. You have to become a student of God's word. You have to be hungry for God's word. You can't make withdrawals if you have not made deposits inside of you, guys. How are you going to make a withdraw? That's like going to your ATM machine and you're pretending you're going to pull out money, but you haven't deposited anything in it. Right? It's going to come back uh, non-sufficient funds. Well, that's what happens in heaven. Non-sufficient word. Sorry. You can't make a withdraw if you haven't deposited. you got to deposit this word of God. This is the way it works. Garbage in, garbage out. Gospel in gospel out whatever comes in comes out and what do we do most often garbage in garbage out what if you got i wonder what would happen to most of you if you started getting gospel in just imagine what gospel out would look like man can you imagine being successful in everything you touch at work successful at home successful at church, successful. Walk into Starbucks, successful. <laughs> Why not? Amen? Amen? Look at Matthew 4, 4, quickly. Let's get out of here. Alexis or whoever's playing piano, let's go. Let me, because that, that, that makes them feel like it's ending. Come on, we're landing this thing. <laughs> okay, quickly. Look at this, Matthew 4, 4. Are you glad you came to church? Okay, look at this. And Jesus answered, it is written. It is what? Written. It is what? It is what? So if it's good for him to write it, it's good for me to write it too. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of almighty God. We got, listen, we're obese in food. We're not obese in word. There's too much malnourishment Christians walking around that don't know God's word. 
They're just cool people. They like to hang out with their friends like, hey, what's up? And we just go to church to hang out. God's not calling us to hang out. God is calling us to thrive. God is calling us to move. God is calling us to grow. God is calling us to produce. Especially the young people here, please, if you get this right now, your age, at your ripe age of youngness, man, you can go so far. Or you can just sit here and just have ears, but nothing's getting in your spirit. Everybody has ears, but not everybody's listening. I'm telling you this. Even right here in this service, which I love y'all, I love all of you, but here's the truth. Some of you, you just, you're just listening, but you're not getting nothing. You know why? Because there must be hunger. The perfect sign of a Christian who's not growing is one that's not hungry. In other words, you're full. Full of what, Pastor? I didn't eat anything before I got here. No, no, full of you. You have to be empty of you in order for God to fill you with him. But if you're full of you, you're never going to change. So how do, I, how do I empty myself, Pastor? You start reading the word, and God will begin to deal with all the carbs inside of you. Huh? God will start confronting that, 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 that weight of stress, that weight of anxiety, that, and, and you'll begin to lose that weight. And then things begin to change. And he answered, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. In other words, you're either putting in treasure or you're putting in trash in your life every single day. Come on, some of us, we spend more time on Netflix than we do in God's word. There's a difference in knowing the person of Jesus and knowing the principles of Jesus. We got to stop just knowing, oh yeah, pastor preached real good on Jesus. Okay, but do you know his principles? You have to get in the word. Amen. Hey, you know, you know, you can tell. This is a uh, Colgate. Colgate, <laughs> pay me. <No. laughs> but but check this out. Check this out. This is you. This is me. Life is going to pressure you. Financial stress, health stress, people stress and what happens is when life starts crushing you with problems and issues you know what happens the squeeze starts happening and when the squeeze starts happening stuff starts coming out right when the squeeze happens it just comes and it comes and it comes here's my question when the pressures of life are squeezing you what's coming out of you garbage or gospel Because when the gospel comes out of you, here's what happens. Yes, the pressure is for all of us, whether you know word or not. The difference is what's coming out. And you know what you do? When that stuff comes out, come on, somebody. God will say all that hell that tried to jack you up. God will say, go ahead, put a little bit of that on there. He's like, let's go ahead and let's use it for something awesome. What does the word do? It washes away every sin. It makes you white as snow again. God will use every single pressure of this life to make you stronger, to make you persevere, to make you more holy. You can't be holy. You're holy because he's holy. You can't even try to work for holiness. The pressure. So when you think about that, you put truth in, truth will come out. If you put love in, love is going to come out. If you put wisdom in, wisdom in, wisdom's going to come out. If you put victory in, victory's going to come out. Huh? Come on. If you put praise in, praise is going to come out. But when you're not putting any of that in, don't expect nothing to come out. Garbage in, garbage out. Understand the power of speaking, guys. You have to understand it. Speak what you're expecting, not what you're experiencing. Too many times I hear what people are experiencing, but I don't hear what they're expecting. Let me show you a scripture so we can get out of here. Isaiah 57, 19 says this. He says, I create the fruit of the lips. That means that life and death is of the power of the tongue. Listen, God's word 
is truth. God's word does not return void. Whatever the lips speak, God has, whether good or bad, it will produce. That's how powerful your tongue is. So if you're always speaking, oh, you know, negative, if you're always complaining, if you're always whining, if you're always bickering, if you're always slandering, let me tell you something. You are producing the fruit of your lips not the lips of God, but if you exchange your words for his words and you start speaking when stuff happens, let me tell you something. You can create a negative situation into your breakthrough situation. You can turn a troubled situation into a blessed situation, but it's going to come out of the fruit of your lips. And the Bible says this, and out of the fruit of your lips, you'll end up eating. I'm stupid. Okay, you're stupid. I'm not smarting up. Okay, you're not smart. I'll never get that job. You'll never get that job. I could never, I could never be a man that has $200 million a year. I could never, I'm too old. Yeah, you're right. You're never going to do it because you're creating the fruit of your lips. You're creating the fruit, good or bad. And, and God's clear. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat it. Stop complaining. Look at your neighbor and say, stop it already. Hey, you guys, look at me. Look at me and tell me, Mauricio, stop complaining. Okay. <laughs> me too. I complain sometimes. I complain about our leaders, our staff, our church, our community, our city. Why can't they get that right? Stop it. I know you're perfect. That didn't happen. I'm just using me as an example. I'm just using me. Yeah. Stop being a negaholic. Huh? Always negative. Everything. What's wrong with you? It's like, my God. Good Lord. There comes negaholic, you know? There. Complain no drama. Like, stop it. Let's stop that stuff. And let's, let's, let's eat the fruit of our lips and start speaking what God says about our situation. Stop saying what's not happening. Stop talking about your experience and start talking about your expectation. I expect God's going to do something. Amen. Romans 10, 17 says this. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I have a challenge for you for the next 30 days. Next 30 days. Listen to me. I want you to spend 15 to 20 minutes in your Bible. 30 days only. 15, 20 minutes, Find, pick the place, pick the time, and don't let no one interrupt it. No one. But the kids need breakfast and wake up earlier. But the phone is ringing. Turn it off. Just shut it off, put it away, and you get alone somewhere that's isolated, quiet, and you say, God, these 15 minutes are yours. And you grab a notebook, and you grab a Bible. Go buy a Bible today. I double dog dare you. Go buy a Bible but I like it on my tech. Okay, that's fine. Then do both. But start for 30 days in a Bible. Go steal a Bible if you have to. I don't care. <laughs> then do something. Just get one. Amen. You know, use that one that you have in your house that's opened up to Psalms 91. And, you know, it's like that big old family Bible. Use that if you have to. You know what I'm saying? That big old sucker that never has been written. Just <sighs> blow the dust off. And uh, I know it's heavy, but, hey, praise God, man, you'll build some faith muscles. I don't care what you do. But you have to take, you have to take the word serious. Here's, here's what Psalms 119 says. He says, the, the word is a lamp to my feet and it's a light to my path. Shut the lights off quickly. I got to go. Shut them off. The lights. The luces. The lights. All of it. Everything. Todo. There you go. Do a black screen. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. Listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You get along with God. You get quiet. And you open the word. The entrance of your word brings light. Turn the lights on. Grab your Bible every day and get with God let light shine and darkness whatever that is in your mind your heart the fears the doubts the unbelief the, the trauma the pain 
God will go in like a surgeon. And he'll go to those places that you didn't even know about. And he'll begin to start that healing process. And you'll start falling in love all over again. Amen. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, thank you so much for your word. I thank you. Your word is a lamp to our feet. And it's a light to our path. Lead us and guide us every single day as we press in and connect with your truth. Truth in, truth out. Love in, love out. Faith in, faith out. Victory in, victory out. Peace in, peace out. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.